Hello! Tis September, and as it's the start of a new month, that means it's also the start of a new mission inspiration over on our Facebook group. So, to start off with, I will show you the mission brief for September, including the 10 prompts, then I'll show you what I've done using those 10 prompts, and then I'll join you again at the end. Don't forget, if you want to take part, all you have to do is to pop along to our Facebook group, and the list is, or the address is just here on the screen, and you can join in with all the fun too. So I will see you at the end of my project. Welcome, Arts Agent Specialists. Your mission for September, should you wish to accept it, is as follows. Step one, cover your page with face fragments. Step two, add thin layers of colored paint. Step three, stamp text or patterns over your page. Step four, add journaling, quotes or phrase. Step five, make marks with paint, inks or sprays. Step six, add a focal image. Step seven, add washi tape or strips of patterned paper. Step eight, add color through a stencil. Step nine, add doodles, scribbles or zentangles. And finally, step 10, finish with a white border. Remember, this message will self-destruct in three seconds. Good luck. <laughs> So I'm starting off with a page in my new 8x12 art journal and as you can see I've already torn up some fragments of faces from magazines and I'm using the matte medium from Mod Podge to stick them all down onto my page. Now I'm not too bothered about getting any wrinkles or bubbles in these as I know I'm going to be covering them over anyway with paint but any bubbles or wrinkles just adds to a little bit of texture. So once we're all stuck down, I'm going to bring out the heat gun just to give it a blast and dry it off before we move on to step number two. So step number two is to add thin layers of coloured paint. So for this to begin with, I'm going to be using the burnt sienna acrylic paint from Reeves, which I've watered down on my craft mat, as you can see, and I'm just doing a real nice background wash. Not too bothered about the paintbrush marks in it this time because I know I'm going to be adding quite a lot of layers on top of this so it doesn't really make that much difference if you've got a few little textured lines in it. And this is the yellow ochre acrylic paint that I've just added a little bit of water to and I'm just adding some of the yellow onto the background just to bring back a little bit of that warmth into the background. So happy with that now, so I'm just going to give it a bit of a heat to dry it off before moving on to step number three. And step number three is to stamp text or patterns over the page. And for this I'm using the Jet Black Archiver link from Ranger. And I'm also using this old-ish Cogs and Gears stamp from British company Paper Mania just to add a little bit of texture and layering into the background. So step number four is to add journaling, quote or phrase. Now I'm using my food ball pen just to add some handwritten journaling into the background of the page. Now this doesn't have to be legible. You can scribble this down as much as you want. Um, I'm just writing down some thoughts that are in my head about my subject. I'm also going to add a more formal quote using my uh, Dymo Letter Tag Label Maker. I'm going to type all that out, print it off, and then I can stick that down onto my page as my main focal quote. So all my quote pieces are now printed out, and I can just peel the backs off because they are self-adhesive, and then just adhere those direct straight down onto the page. 
they are quite strong, the detail on the back is quite strong, so I won't have to add a sealer coat over the top. And I just noticed that I'd made a spelling mistake and I actually do it twice because obviously I've got big fat fingers and I can't control the buttons properly. So I had to just do it a couple of times before I got the right spelling so I could stick it down. So now I've spelt the word correctly, I can move on. So step number five is to make marks with paint, ink or sprays. Now I'm going to use the titanium white acrylic paint from Reeves and I've grabbed a selection of bits from my mark making drawer and I'm just going to um, add some marks using the white paint randomly around the page. Everything that I'm using is just something that I've collected over the year or so that I've been out journaling. So they're just things that you can find around the house. This is a piece of bubble wrap and I've also got the lid from a um, spritz bottle, uh, I believe. I think this is an old Dilutions lid. So everything that you probably are having in your stash already. So step number six then is to add a focal image or images in my case. So for this, I'm actually going to be layering up two or three different things. So first of all, I've already die cut out using my Tim Holtz Cogs and Gears um, deep die, uh, Sizzix die uh, on my big shot. And I've just used some gray grunge board and I'm just covering those with a coat of the Thalo blue or Thalo blue acrylic paint from Reeves and all I'm using is a, um, a basic craft sponge, it's nothing special. Uh, I'm just cleaning my fingers off there and wiping up all the excess. So this is the rusty paper textured paint that you've seen me use before from Viva Decor and just using a stencil brush I'm going to go over and cover up most of that blue paint. Now you'll see why I've used the blue later on when I add my next focal points or when I stick them all down. So I'm just going to cover these cogs up with that rusty paper or the rusty textured paint and then give them a dry with my heat gun and then we'll be ready to stick them down onto my page. So everything's dry and I'm ready to start sticking everything down so I'm just using this multi-purpose glue from Color. Uh, this is the type of glue that if you get it all over your fingers it just rubs off and I'm just adding it to the back. I'm just sticking those down into the background and I know they do start to disappear but I do have plans to um, pick out the edges of those with a white pen later on when I get to do my doodling. And here's my other uh, focal point that I've already printed off and cut out um, off camera and I'm just going to stick that down over the top of my cogs. And as you can see this is the reason why I added the blue to the back of the cogs is because when I printed it off, uh, it came out bluish rather than black. And as you can see, I did put a slit in the heart and now I've just tucked a cog in there. So it looks as though the cog is coming out of that heart. So step number seven is to add washi tape or patterned paper strips. So I've just grabbed a couple of rolls of washi tape from my stash drawer. And all I'm doing is just tearing off some small pieces and I'm just adding those just in strategic places on the page. I'm not using a lot. I don't think you need a lot for decoration on this page. And I've just chosen some pure black and white ones because I don't want to add any extra colour into the page. And I think the black and white ones work quite nicely. So I've just used two types and I've picked ones with um, like text on and ones that I've got some industrial kind of cogs and gears on them so it all fits in. So step number eight is to add colour through a stencil. Now the stencil I'm using here is the Chevron Arrow stencil from TCW and I'm just using the yellow ochre acrylic paint that I've already used on a craft sponge and I'm just going to stencil through in a couple of places around my page just to add a little bit more of that warmth back to the foreground rather than having it all in the background. And of course before I move on to my next layer or my next step which is step number nine I will bring up the heat gun and give it a quick blast. So step number nine is to add doodling scribbles or zentangles. So for this I'm using the Signal White Opaque Rollerball Pen from the Mitsubishi Pencil Co and I'm going to 
highlight or pick out some highlights on the cogs that are sticking out from behind my anatomical heart. So this is the reason why I wasn't too bothered about them disappearing into the background because I knew I wanted to pick them out with a white pen later on. And I will also add in some doodles around my word quotes and word blocks and tie in some of those circles to make them look a little bit more like circuit boards. So the final step, step number 10, is to add a white border of your choice. Now for me, I'm going to use titanium white acrylic paint from Reeves and the bubble stencil from Dilusions, and I'm just going to apply a very small or very um, light border around the page using the bubble stencil just to tie everything together. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do. I'm just going to catch the edges with the paint. I'm not going really heavy into it because I don't really think it needs it. It's just a kind of light border to finish off. And just to finish off completely, because it was an anatomical heart illustration, I just thought it would be nice to carry on where the lines were showing the different parts of the heart and just to add those back in on the illustration and just to sign and date it. And then this page is complete. So I hope you really enjoyed watching that art journal page come together. And as I said before, if you want to take part, you want to join in all the fun with the Mission Inspiration monthly prompts, then all you have to do is to join us over at this Facebook group. And that's it. It's as simple as that. It's free to join and then you can play along to your heart's content. So that's all from me. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up share with all your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video that's all from me for now i will see you all again real soon bye for now